Hey everybody, welcome to Friday Fruit Clips. This is episode number 18. Of course, this is my weekly series where I play you a couple of fruity clips, uh, false prophets, false teachers, in order to expose them. They make their livings blaspheming and shipwrecking the faith of untold millions. So we want to push back against them because we love the truth of Jesus Christ. And so, though this might seem a little odd, uh, there's also intention here. We don't want you to fear these false prophets. They are false, according to Deuteronomy 18, verse 22. We're not to fear them. So we want to actually show you that they're just downright silly and uh, that we're not afraid of them. So, with that, let's get started. Here we go. All right, first up, we've got Cindy Jacobs. Now, Cindy Jacobs, of course, is a confirmed false prophet, and I would call her a professional fleecer of the flock. She loves your money. Did I say your money? Yeah, I said your money. She loves to get your money off of your person and onto her person. Now, we all know that false prophets, they're performers and they're actors. And they're also storytellers. Think about it, 99% of what you know about your favorite rock star false prophet, well, they're told to you by them. They're the ones that tell you all the miraculous stories. And in this case, it's no different. Listen to Cindy here as she tells you about an event where she saved our country from certain recession. Give it a listen. I remember I was flying home from Israel one time, I think it was 1987, and the Lord said to me, the stock market is about to crash. I want you to go into fasting. So I began to fast and pray, and I came before the court of heaven on behalf of the United States to avert that. And it was lessened, and we didn't go into full-blown recession. So this is so very incredible, just oozing of narcissism and um, fantasy. Cindy says that God himself told her to fast and pray for the United States because the stock market was going to crash. And then Cindy says that she alone went before the court of heaven and on behalf of the United States, just her now, nobody else, that she alone moved God so powerfully that a full recession was averted. She's like James Bond. <laughs> and again, the story is being brought to you by, well, Cindy Jacobs. Now, stop me if you've heard this one, guys. Have you heard this one? Back in 1987, I went on a top secret mission for God. Have I ever told you this story? Stop me if you've heard it. She's a storyteller. So uh, everybody out in the audience is, wow, incredible. Did this really happened? Yeah, of course it did. So again, Cindy's the one telling you, and this is what the pattern is. It's the false prophets, the false teachers. They stand up on stage and they start storytelling these incredible, fantastic stories of fantasy. And it's just amazing. And just like James Bond, you know, I guess we avoided collapse because, well, Cindy, Cindy, she's like a secret agent for God, I guess. So she's incredibly important, and, you know, that reminds me of when I was called by God to do a top-secret mission also. Did I ever tell you about the time that I single-handedly stopped Kim Jong-un from destroying California? Have you heard this one? Well, probably not. It was top-secret. Back in 2013, God told me to intercede on behalf of the United States, so I entered the courts of heaven, and, well, whew, California's still there. Thanks to me, I was obedient, and I'm super awesome, and California's there because of my awesomeness. So it's sad, but this type of deception works all too often. And, of course, it continues to, because as long as there's gullible believers that want to believe in this fantasy, you'll have wolves like Cindy Jacobs out there telling fantastic, unverifiable stories uh, and it's really sad. So certainly pray for Cindy Jacobs that before she passes, she will repent the storytelling and using the name of Jesus Christ to gain monetarily. It's wrong. It's atrocious. 
So let's move on to the next one. There is a change coming in your life. There is a shift taking place right now in your life. As you're sitting through these meetings, something is changing forever. God is taking you to a place where you'll never have to struggle and toil again in your life. Whatever you've been dealing with, God is going to remove it out of the way. He is going to comfort your life. So whatever's making you uncomfortable, expect it to be removed during this meeting. Amen. All right, so this was atrocious. And uh, that was less than a minute, by the way. We're going to examine what he said in just a second. But if you ever want to know why I do what I do, it's because of guys like Bill Winston and how he preys upon the simple-minded, the gullible, and the weak. Look at the title, Wealth Transfer, put out on the Kenneth Copeland Ministries channel. Almost viewed, I'm sorry, viewed by almost 2 million people. And this was put out five years ago. There is no expiration date, right? The gullible, the simple-minded, they're always going to be there. And they're always going to believe this nonsense. So this was just atrocious. Now, this is exactly what he just said. There is a change coming in your life. There is a shift taking place right now in your life. And you're sitting through these meetings. Something is changing forever. God is taking you to a place where you'll never have to struggle and toil again in your life. Whatsoever you've been dealing with, God is going to remove it out of the way. He's going to comfort your life. So whatever is making you uncomfortable, expect it to be removed during this meeting. Now, this is atrocious again because of what he is falsely promising here. To tell somebody who is sitting under your authority because they think you're a man of God and they think that you're speaking on behalf of God. And you're telling, in many cases, desperate people that God is taking you to a place where you'll never have to struggle and toil again in your life? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? It is so, first of all, it is so anti-scriptural, anti-biblical. To guarantee this to somebody is just atrocious. Whatever you've been dealing with, with God is going to remove it out of the way. How can he guarantee that? Of course he can. This is, again, just unbelievable. One of the cruelest things you can do is something like this right here. This is what God says, everybody. And whoever's listening to this is what he's telling them. It is, it is cruelty, isn't it? And all these people expecting things like wealth transfers and to have all of their struggles and toil removed forever from their life. This guy's teaching false hope. And so what happens? What happens in a situation like this? Well, guess what? The, the struggles are still there. The toils don't go away. They've emptied their pockets into the coffers, made this guy very wealthy. But they still have all their problems and nothing's changed. So what happens in a situation like this? Well, their faith becomes shipwrecked and they walk away, not from old Bill here. They walk away from God because of what Bill did. And that's why these guys are so dangerous. And that's why they need to be exposed. All right, just a quick note as to why I showed you that clip from five years ago. Uh, we watched it on the Kenneth Copeland channel, but here, look at this. This is a channel called Prophetic Timeline. They took an excerpt and put it out just six days ago. All right, just six days ago. Why? Well, because the wealth transfer, again, it, it has no expiration date. It'll get them every time, and it works. So, sadly, they continue to use it, and sadly, people continue to fall for it. All right, next up, we've got psychic clown Chris Reed thinks he's a prophet. He's not a prophet. We're going to listen to a clip and then we'll comment. 
I just heard this uh, in my spirit. Is there uh, someone in here, you have a daughter named Rachel? Okay, there, there. Stand up, stand up, all right. I know some of you, some of you I don't. I've seen your faces. Um, I, I, I just want to tell all of you something. This, this is a sign and a token that you don't have to live with Leah second best anymore. God is about to give you your dream, your opportunity, the doorway. In fact, let me say something. Does the name you, the second man there, is it Maurice? What, is that name significant to you? I have no way of knowing that. You've never told me. That's my middle name. That's your middle name. I want you to know that the Lord said the prayers of your mother are being cashed in for your family. All right, so this isn't prophecy. And I'm going to let the rest of the clip play, but I wanted to interject this is not prophecy. This is called fishing. God's not telling you anything. This man is asking this other man, is this such and such name? Is it, does, does this mean anything to you? That's not prophecy. That's the exact same thing that the psychics do. Also note this man's demeanor, Chris Reed. He's sweating. He's sniffing. What's going on here? I can probably venture to guess. But this is all just evil. Something about Dion or something like that, I, I, I'm hearing. That's my brother. That's your brother. There's about to come salvation to your family. He promised he'd save you and your household. Amen. Orlando. Are, are you from Orlando? What's Orlando? That's his first name. That's his first name, so your brother's middle name is... Orlando. Dion. Well, what do you know? See, i got to shut my brain down so the spirit will speak. I like that. <laughs> All right, so here we are, end of times, end of days. We've got a so-called prophet preacher doing psychic readings from the pulpit. You know, New Age Alice Bailey told us their goal was to destroy Christianity. And she, of course, a major student of theosophy, Madam Blavatsky, this is their doing, and the church is allowing this nonsense in. But Chris Reed, Creep Factor 12, clearly he's scouring the internet to get information from social media. What he's doing is not prophecy, all right? Uh, and it's just evil. Uh, we've seen Amanda Grace do it. We've seen uh, Robin Bullock even doing this. People love it. They love to get their fortunes read. But you know what? It's not of God. This is not of God. Avoid this man. Pray for the people that they would not fall for this. And here we are. It is so unbelievable that we have to point something like this out. Avoid Chris Reed. All right, so I'm at my channel right now. I'm going to scroll down a little bit because I did a video. Here we go. This was four months ago. Julie Green, huge Trump false prophecy. What was this about? Let's watch a clip or two, and we'll go from there. I told you, my children, don't worry about the things that you see. Because the things that you see are temporary. What they are trying to do to your rightful president, that's a laughing matter. There will be no indictment of my son. 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 Now, Julie Green is one of, if not the single most dangerous false prophet on social media, at least in my estimation. I've documented over 80 actual confirmed false prophecies that this woman has committed, and she's still going. And it's an absolute tragedy. So the reason that I played that clip from that uh, video is this. As of Thursday, August 3rd, uh, Trump's been indicted for a third time. For a third time. Now, you heard Julie, in her own words, say, as she pretended God was speaking through her, that Trump would not be indicted even one time. Well, now he's been indicted three times. So, if you want to be technical, that's three false prophecies. 
It really is. And so it is, again, terrible that we have a generation who absolutely refuses to reject false prophets and false prophetesses. This is a perfect example. Again, we've documented over 80 actual confirmed false prophecies, and the vast majority of her followers simply will not reject her biblically. So they side with fables. One of the most amazing and prophetic series of verses comes in 2 Timothy chapter 4, start in verse 3. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. And so this is what we're seeing, a generation that has abandoned sound doctrine in lieu of fables, in lieu of fantasy. And that's what we're seeing today, sad. So as always, pray for Julie Green. Pray that she will feel the real weight. I'm talking the spiritual weight that is upon her as she is somebody who goes out daily and lies in the name of God Almighty. It is incredible. So pray for her that she would repent and shut down her fake ministry and pray that her followers would awaken and come back to the truth of Jesus Christ um, because clearly they are under strong delusion because they don't abide in the truth of Jesus Christ. So pray that uh, more and more would come away from this. All right, so next up, we've got Robin Bullock, a.k.a. Tombstone. And as of August 4th, 2023, I want to make this official, this announcement here. I am modifying Robin Bullock's nickname of Tombstone. He will now be known as Frankenstein Tombstone, and I'll explain that in just a minute. But I'm going to play a clip right now, and I want to give you warning graphic language okay so if you're not up for that sort of thing don't listen to the clip so you have been warned here we go so i have come to see if the cry is as great as i've heard says the lord and so now it will be weighed in the balance Judges make right judgments. Attorneys and lawyers, clean your act up. Clean your ass up. For too many asses, donkeys, are influencing your words. The world is not created according to the mouth of an ass. The governments are not established according to the braying of a midnight donkey. The governments are established on righteousness and the word of God. So clean your ass up. All right, so here is Robin Bullock again cussing from the pulpit and he tries to cover it up by saying what well, has something to do with you know the donkeys of the democratic party or something like that but it doesn't the way that he's speaking it's vulgar it's cussing and uh some of you don't think it's a big deal but it is god is holy a an alleged man of god in any way or in every way shape or form does not speak foul language like this, particularly from the pulpit. And given that this man has an audience of an average, I'd say, of 25 to 50,000, up to 100,000 sometimes, worldwide, this is how he chooses to speak. It is foul. This man is foul. Now, in the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, let's scroll down to verse 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. All right, so why the nickname change? Why are we going from Tombstone to Frankenstein Tombstone? 
Well, I'll tell you why. As Robin Bullock gets worse and worse and falls deeper and deeper into his self-aggrandizing, narcissistic fantasy, whatever it is here, uh, he has within himself created his own monster. He has created his own monster, hence Frankenstein. Now, what do I mean by this? Well, here's what it is. When you hear an alleged man of God cussing from the pulpit and getting his assembly to accept it as normal, then what you've got is a situation where an alleged man of God has gone and turned holy to profane. And he's successfully done it because all of his followers have accepted it. But it doesn't stop there. He's also gotten his followers, both at the church and online worldwide, to accept his false prophecies. That's really quite something. If you look at him, this man plays this weird, mystical, weird rock and roll music, and it's about as unholy as you can get, and they accept that. And I got to tell you, when your alleged preacher looks no different than the lead guitar player for Black Sabbath, well, something might be wrong. Hence, Frankenstein Tombstone. It's getting worse. Very dark person. And then, that's even before you get into the swindling of all the donations he takes in and his church takes in, and they do nothing in the community. My prayers are for Warrior Alabama and what they have to endure with this man. I've never seen really anything like it where an alleged church takes in all this money and there is zero outreach. Now, if I'm wrong, please show me. Show me the outreach. And a lot of people will say, well, they don't have to show. It's their money. Actually, it's not. If you, if you claim to represent God, this is the church's money. And the fact that he's getting all this money in via donations after actually falsely prophesying, lying in the name of Jesus Christ. So he needs to show this outreach if there is one. And if there's not, then how is this a church? You're not doing anything to feed the poor, to clothe the naked, to shelter the homeless, to help the needy. It's very sad. All right, so as we close this down, pray for the people of Warrior, Alabama. Please keep them in your prayers. They have to endure a lot with this guy. Pray that God would shut down Robin Bullock and his fake ministry. It is a fake ministry. It's not real. This man is as unholy as they get. And until that happens, stand in the truth of Jesus Christ and resist rock star false prophets and rock star false teachers. All right, that's going to do it for this week's episode of Friday Fruit Clips. For all of you that love Jesus Christ in truth and sincerity, God bless you so much. We're in this battle, and uh, stay true to your faith, your biblical faith. Stand in Jesus Christ, and don't be moved by vain janglings and vain talkers. Right? Read your Bible and pray always. God bless you so much. Until next time.